The man who moved to overthrow Vladimir Putin has died in a fiery plane crash. Russian aviation officials have confirmed that Yevgeny Prigozhin, the leader of the Wagner mercenary group, was on board a private jet that fell out of the sky north of Moscow. Putin has not yet commented, but in the words of America's President Joe Biden, not much happens in Russia that Putin's not behind. Europe correspondent Lisa Raymer reports. When you strike at the king, don't miss. Yevgeny Prigozhin appeared to sign his own death warrant when he took on Putin. Now the burning wreckage of the mutineer's plane could be evidence of another ruthless revenge killing. It uh, most likely will be presented as a friendly fire incident or something like that. It will never be officially confirmed that uh, uh, Prigozhin or his air jet was uh, specifically targeted. But uh, we know when, uh, Pri when Putin um, intends to send a message. Prigozhin's jet crashed just after takeoff from Moscow. Pointing to the trails of white smoke in the sky, analysts suspect the plane was shot down by Russian air defences. In a phone call, a Russian official said, All the necessary forensic examinations will be carried out to establish the cause of the crash. As the news broke, standing unfazed, centre stage at a concert, Vladimir Putin, a man who loves anniversaries and hates traitors. A coincidence, or not, then, that today is exactly two months since Prigozhin mounted the biggest challenge to Putin's leadership in his two decades at the top. In June, the Wagner chief led a heavily armed insurrection, marching on Moscow to topple the military leadership fed up with their failing efforts in Ukraine. While others go to jail for so much as discrediting the Russian armed forces, through the miracles of mediation, Putin agreed to exile Prigozhin to Belarus. And the Wagner leader has remained as outspoken as ever. Last seen in this video, seemingly in Africa, shared just two days ago. Vladimir Putin is the boss. And that means he wants to be in charge, he wants no opposition, no mouthing off, and it doesn't matter where it comes from, what side of the political spectrum. He's got to get rid of challenges to authority. Yevgeny Prigozhin was once Putin's close friend, a former thug and prisoner who became the president's caterer and then mercenary in chief, lauded as a Russian hero for leading the victory in Bakhmut. Just months later, he was labelled a traitor. President Joe Biden's reaction to the news echoing many around the world. I mean, it's not much that happens in Russia or Putin up in time. Accident or assassination? Revenge is a much more familiar page in Putin's playbook than forgiveness ever has been. Well, Lee Set joins us now. Lee Set, it's not the first time President Putin's enemies have died in suspicious circumstances. No, certainly not. President Putin certainly has form in this department. You might recall in 2006, Alexander Litvinenko, a former KGB spy, was murdered with Putin's approval. Fast forward 12 years, you have the famous Salisbury attack here in the UK, where the former Russian spy and his daughter were poisoned using Novichok. And then just recently, in 2020, Alexei Navalny, an incredibly outspoken Putin critic, collapsed on a flight also linked to Novichok, the nurse agent. He did survive that attack but he is now serving a hefty prison sentence. All this to say that dissenting voices in Russia are simply not tolerated. Prigozhin in particular exposed Putin's weaknesses and this appears to be a very deliberate attempt by the president to re-establish his position and strengthen it. However it has also served to expose his weakness because there are hardly uh, many strong leaders around the world who have to assassinate their key opponents in order to retain their power. I see it. Thank you.